All right, this sun season, evolve your sun care with new Banana Boat 360 coverage. With Advanced Control Mist, it's a new way to spray. It's an all-new bottle for an all-new mist experience that smells great and is incredibly light on your skin. You can even customize your spray. Like to cover targeted areas, you just tap the trigger lightly, or you can pull the trigger fully for a long, continuous spray, ensuring long-lasting Banana Boat protection. Plus, it's refillable. From sweat-resistant sport formula to kids' SPF 50+, plus, this is sun care that'll come in handy when my kids are swimming, playing sports, when I'm hiking, when we're out at the lake, or whatever it is that we're doing outdoors. Shop Banana Boat 360 Mist at Walmart, Target, or Amazon. Summer is upon us, and whatever you have going on, a vacation, a staycation, a summer wedding, well, Macy's has you covered. If you need summer dresses, matching sets, volume sleeve tops, wedges, straw-crafted bags, I mean, really, they have what you need head to toe. I'm talking Levi's, Dolce Vita, Lacoste, and more. So shop summer must-haves at Macy's. Go to Macy's.com slash own your style. Again, that's Macy's.com slash own your style. Host Nora McInerney is back for season two of The Head Start, Embracing the Journey, a podcast from Ruby Studio and Abby. In each episode, Nora has real conversations with real people living with chronic migraine to see how they took action to understand this disease. So jump into the conversation for season two, a show that creates a little more space for empathy and understanding in such a complicated world. There shouldn't be so much hesitation around asking questions and asking for help. So don't wait. Join the Head Start Embracing the Journey and learn a little more about life with chronic migraine. Happy Tuesday. Welcome to The Fifth Thing. I'm Amy. And I'm Kat. And today's quote is from Terry Pratchett, and it goes like this. The trouble with having an open mind is that people will insist on coming along and trying to put things in it. (laughs) Boom. I feel like it's funny, but also deep and a good reminder that, you know, you can be infiltrated. (laughs) It makes me think of the cult documentary, the 7M, Dancing for the Devil, because we can have an open mind, but we also have to have the awareness of what we want to allow in and what we don't. Well, and I think that you have different stages in life where you may be more vulnerable or not because you had two sisters in that documentary Well, one is participating in the documentary. The other one's just in it. (laughs) She's spoken out, by the way, but I don't want to give too much away in case people want to go watch it because it is a fascinating story. It's terrible and sad, Mm -hmm. but overall fascinating. And it's happening in real time. Which is so weird. And, you know, you had one sister. They grew up with the same parents, same loving home. They seem to be very tight, great relationship. And one that was susceptible to whatever is happening Mm -hmm. and one that was invited into it and left one of the dinners being like, I'm never going back to this again. This just doesn't feel right. So I wonder what it is. And maybe because there's a romantic relationship tying her to that as well. And when you've got a partner that's in it too, it's maybe more difficult to see things. But yeah, that's on Netflix. Highly recommend it, but it's heavy. So just know that it does make you think and help you be aware of just how quickly someone's life can change because it was it within a matter of year that their family was turned upside down because of a dance cult. And the crazy part is I've seen them dancing all over TikTok and my Instagram. They show up in my algorithm all the time. I don't follow them, but I'm like, I know these dancers and they look like they're having so much fun and they're happy. But you'll see in the documentary that people that have left the dance cult are now sharing their side of it and just how they, yeah, they weren't able to see certain things the leader of the management company. He's also a pastor. And then it's this rabbit hole of some cult-like things within his church for the last 20 years or something crazy. So it's a lot. Anyway, (laughs) back to having an open mind. Do you think you're a person, Kat, that has an open mind or you're more closed off? I think that I would have answered this question differently if you asked me this a couple years ago. I want to say I have an open mind. I want to say that. However, I feel like I've become more of a skeptic in the past couple years. Yeah, which, because I'm so open to so many things. And then sometimes I say them to you and yeah. you're like, Amy, don't believe that. I'm like and a, I'm like, what? <laughs> it, sometimes it feels like you're a Debbie Downer, but at the same time, I guess that's the balance of like, how do I stay open and also not join a dance cult? 
And now I look at things at first, I look at them with a little bit of skepticism. And then I have to like have some proof that that makes sense, which sometimes it's not fun. Well, I think that you're talking about some of the more extreme things where you want the data behind what's being out there, because let's be honest, you know, when I was on my Joe Dispenza kick, you're kind of talking about that. And it's like, okay, where's, show me the data, right? Of whatever he's claiming, which if y'all aren't familiar with him, you can Google and you'll see what we're talking about. But what about just in life? Because I think of me as a 20 year old and I was not very open-minded and welcoming to certain ideas and things, not just stuff like a Joe Dispenza type category. It's more of like, I definitely was more judgmental in my 20s and I maybe would have thought, I I think I'm pretty open-minded, but I was very small thinking like I kind of surrounded myself with people that all thought like me. So I thought everybody thought that way and I was confused when they didn't, you know? (laughs) Because I was like, wait, wait, what? what? (laughs) Yeah, kind of like growing up as a Christian where everybody voted Republican. When I started to meet Christians that voted Democrat, which I'm not getting political here and I'm not even saying how I vote. I just remember being shocked like, what? Well, well, then you might not be a Christian. I thought the same thing. I was like, (laughs) Democrats are bad people. Like (laughs) we can't be friends with them. (laughs) I didn't even know what Democrat meant, but... (laughs) That was my thought. It's just that that's what I was surrounded by. So my that was that was before social media. So there was no echo chamber, as yeah. they call that now, when your algorithm is feeding you that stuff. But I had my own echo chamber. echo chamber growing up of who you're around, and not that my family walked around thinking that. It's just that everybody yeah. was that way. So I just thought, but it's not like my parents said you know, if someone votes this way or they think this way that they are this, but that's what I developed on my own from what I was surrounded by. And then I've evolved over time. And now in my forties, I'm way more open-minded. And I guess I keep track of how I used to respond to certain things on the Bobby Bone show in my twenties, that now I would not respond that way after a lot of life experiences and a lot of evolving and growth. And some of it was being naive ignorant to certain things, whatever. But I have a list that people can run by if like you're curious, are you an open-minded or a closed-minded person? Or are your friends, your family, are they open or closed-minded? I've got a little checklist we can go over. Okay. So I'll ask you and then you can see how how Kat responds and save these questions for yourself. So four signs you're an open-minded person. You're respectful of other people's beliefs and opinions. You listen to new ideas and perspectives. You're able to change your mind when presented with new evidence and you're interested in learning about different cultures and ways of life. Well, I want to say I do those things, but I have a biased opinion of myself. So I I think I do those. I think you do. As your friend, I'll say that I think that you do. I think the one that probably is the hardest is being able to change my mind when presented with new evidence. And I think I've learned that that isn't just a me problem. A lot of people, when they are given new evidence or when you're in a debate, what researchers have found is that people tend to double down on their opinions when presented with counter evidence to disprove it. We do this like mental gymnastics things where we like search for other ways to make our situation fit versus really listen and be like, oh, because it's well, that, easier. Well, what were you going to say? Well, I, again, I don't want to get political, but now that you're saying that, it makes me think that must be literally what some politicians are doing. Yes. It, yeah, yeah, yeah. They're just doubling down because they don't want to, face anything because I'm like there has to be more room for compromise here we can't be so like black and white about certain things and it doesn't make sense to me but now that you're saying research shows that some people do that maybe that's part of what it is and there's like I'm doubling down when it's easier to do that than it is to dismantle all of these beliefs we've held because of whatever they mean or whatever they hold for us so think about in a political debate for you to be in a debate and then for you to give me a counterpoint and I'm like oh that makes sense. It's like, well, then what do I, I've lost this huge thing. And what am I supposed to do with that? And these people it's are the voting risk is for me because of yeah. this thing. So now I can't. So you know, the, that debate evolve. is not about kind of understanding or having a compromise. It's literally, I'm not even listening to what you're saying. I'm just waiting to say my next thing. So I think that is my hardest thing here. But I, I don't think that means I'm not open minded. Because I think when you were talking earlier about open minded, less about like Joe Dispenza and more about, yeah, a lot of my beliefs have changed in the past couple of years in a, I think, flexible way. Yeah. I mean, and I'll speak to me as someone that went through a divorce. Now we've talked about how 20 year old me would not have been okay with me. 20 year old would be judging me. Mm -hmm. And now 40 year old me, 43, 
has grace and compassion and, you yeah. know, care. And I'm more open to that. This happens in life. And obviously I know it happens. My parents got divorced, but it's just something like I had this rigid, like that will not happen to me and you need to stick it out and people need to work together. And that's why on the Bobby Bone Show, mm -hmm. a similar example from my twenties would be Bobby and Lunchbox would start spitting out these ridiculous things that my husband would do because I said divorce was not an option ever. And they'd be like, well, what if he murders somebody and goes to jail? All right, you got to love a place that makes shopping for gifts super easy because heads up, Father's Day is June 16th and Macy's has got you covered. Their ultimate gift guide makes shopping for the dad or the dad figure in your life super easy. You can shop by price, 25 and under, 15 and under, 100 and lux. You can shop by category like cologne, watches, leather goods. You can even shop by gift lists. Like if your dad loves to grill, then shop for grill master things. If your dad loves to golf, then you can go to the gift list that is for the golfer. I mean, really, Macy's has thought of it all. If you have a tech-savvy dad, voila, Macy's Gift Finder, again, has you covered with that. Top gifts include Beats headphones, JBL portable speakers, Nintendo Switch, and more. Top brands such as Calvin Klein, Tommy Hilfiger, Polo Ralph Lauren, Columbia, and more. Really, Macy's has it all, so don't be a last-minute shopper. Father's Day is June 16th. Make sure to check out Macy's.com slash gift finder to find a unique gift they'll love. This show is sponsored by BetterHelp. Something that I've learned in therapy is that goals are really important. Like, it can really help you out. Like, when life is going so fast, it's important to take a moment to celebrate how far you've come, celebrate those wins, but also look forward to where you're going. Make adjustments for the rest of the year. And therapy can help you take stock of your progress and set achievable goals for the next three months, the next six months. I have personally benefited from therapy in so many ways. I feel like we'd be here all day if I were to tell you all of the ways therapy has helped me out, giving me tools to have in my back pocket for when we need to bust them out, coping skills, how to set boundaries. I feel so much more empowered uh, because of therapy. So I'm very thankful for it. If you're thinking of starting therapy, well, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Take a moment, visit betterhelp.com slash four things today to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash four things. Again, you're going to get 10% off your first month. I don't want to waste my time taking vitamins that aren't really going to do much for me. Like I want research. I want to know like, hey, this is actually doing something for my body. And Ritual knows this. That's why they conducted the research. They've done clinical trials on their Essential for Women 18 Plus multivitamin. The results, well, it increased vitamin D levels by 43% and omega-3 DHA levels by 41% in just 12 weeks. And as a woman, I want healthy vitamin D levels and omega-3 levels. And all I got to do is take my Ritual Essential for Women 18 Plus Multivitamin every morning. I take them on an empty stomach, but sometimes if I forget, I may take them in the afternoon. It's really up to you when you want to take them. There's nine key nutrients in two delayed release capsules. And what the delay release capsules does for us is it optimizes our body's absorption of these nutrients. It's gentle on the empty stomach. Like I said, I can take it first thing in the morning and I'm totally fine. And with a minty essence in every bottle, it actually makes taking your vitamins enjoyable. No more shady business. Ritual is essential for women. 18 plus is a multivitamin that you can actually trust. Get 25% off your first month at ritual.com slash four things. Start ritual or add essential for women 18 plus to your subscription today. That's ritual.com slash four things for 25% off. Bobby and Lunchbox would start spitting out these ridiculous things that my husband would do because I said divorce was not an option ever. And they'd be like, well, what if he murders somebody and goes to jail? I, I would double down. I'll I would also go to jail I, with him. I'll, I'll commit a crime and <laughs> we'll be sentenced in the same place and we'll be married happily ever after. You know, I, I don't know. Like, I just would double down. I couldn't just pause and be like, you know what? You're right. Mm -hmm. Obviously, there were like, if something were to happen totally horrific, which murder falls in that category, or something yeah. that just is like unfathomable that real people have to deal with and make decisions every day. You as a therapist, Kat, I'm curious your thoughts on this, but like even that pastor from the mm -hmm. the documentary, 
Dancing for the Devil. I'm like, what happened to him? Or like, where did this start? What's the domino effect? Mm -hmm. And like, was he just born and had every opportunity to thrive and somehow he became evil? Or like, what was done to him and when is the pattern going to get broken? Or, Or who's to blame? Or is it just truly him to blame? I mean, I know we're all responsible, but everybody has their own baggage that they bring and behaviors that are this is happening because, well, this happened. And that's where my brain always goes is to thinking, what happened to them that made them do this? And it makes me sad for them because it's like nobody, well, I guess I can't say nobody. I don't know. Yeah. Maybe psychopaths are just different. I'm not sure. But I would think that nobody is like, when I grow up, I want to be an evil, manipulative cult leader. I would like to think that nobody thinks that. And I don't think anybody is born thinking that because you don't have those thoughts. But I struggle with that a lot in the sense, I don't know if this is exactly what you mean, but most of the time people that do the horrific things that you are speaking of, certain types of abuse, something has been done to them, right? So they're either like mimicking something or they're, the way they view relationships and people is just skewed. And so they don't care. or They lack certain ability to relate and have emotion and empathy. But where I struggle is I can have a lot of understanding for why people make certain choices. I can have that understanding and I can offer a certain amount of compassion for that. And at the same time, people are still responsible for the choices that they make. And we don't know his story. We don't know what, I mean, or maybe it is out there. I'm not sure. I haven't seen it, but something could have horrific happened in his life. And this is like a trauma response. At the same time, he is an adult making choices and making these decisions. And so at a certain point, the compassion cannot override certain things. And I think that happens a lot with people who get involved in groups like that, like the Nexium cult and I mean, even 7M and the Shekinah church, I can have understanding for, especially why somebody would join Nexium when it first started. Do you know what that is? Yeah, I watched the documentary. So it sounds like something I would have joined if I didn't know any better. And it's supposed to help people become better professionals. And there's all this like personal growth at a certain spot, I have to take accountability for what I chose to believe when I was getting responses in my body that said, mm, this is a little off. Right. Instead of doubling down, yeah, you step back, yeah. assess the situation, and then start to yeah. make some choices. And I, I get that some others are, are more vulnerable. I mean, and you'll see in the, the documentary, if you watch it, one of the women that was more part of the church, not the dance cult, but the church part. And her leaving, it was so difficult because that's your brainwash to think, well, I'm going to either go to hell or my whole family is. And if I stay, I save everybody, you know? And when you're not able to have rational thoughts because you've been brainwashed, then how do you step back and assess a well, situation? I think that's, I don't want to say too much. I don't know the answer to this. I wrestle with, at a certain point, we have no ability to actually see if, from what I've found, if brainwashing is like a, a real thing. Like if there is an ability for humans to be removed of their ability to make free thought and free will with their choices. And a lot of the reason we don't have that information is because to do those kinds of experiments, they would be unethical, right? So it would be like the, that Stanford prison experiment. Do you remember that? Do you remember that? I don't know that you were alive during that, but like that kind of thing. I remember learning about yeah, it. Yeah, it just is like, we, we can't do those kinds of things. So it's hard to know and what I have found, and I think that this is just as bad, this is just as hard, is there is something tying us to wanting to continue to believe certain things. Like what you just said of, about like God, like our family is all going to go to hell if I leave this church. So there's a reason that we're going to choose to hang on to that belief, even though we there's a part of it that's like, mm. and you'll hear some of the people in there talk about like, well, I thought this was weird, but he said this and I was really afraid. But he said this when I was really afraid. And so I have compassion and empathy for the idea that, gosh, I don't know what it would be like. It's like those emails you used to get in middle school that would be like, if you don't forward this, your whole family's going to die. Or if you do forward this, Justin Timberlake's going to show up in your living room. And like a large part of me is like, okay, this is not real. But if there's one little iota of a chance that my family's going to die because I don't forward this email... I do not want to live with that. And so that's what I choose to lean into. And this is way more complicated than I'm making it. But I think that's the struggle that I have is how much of this is trauma. It is trauma. And how much of this is choice 
where do we draw the line? And maybe the best way to look at it is it's, it's both. And people can be victims and in that vulnerable state, make choices that they wouldn't have made if they had better support and more support and different support. What is the cult book that you read? Sounds like a cult. Okay. I'm so just good. thought you could throw that out there in case uh, people are getting interested. Had zero intent of talking about <laughs> cults. Uh, That's or, the podcast. The book politics. is cultish. Col- yeah. Col- cultish. Uh, that sounds yeah, right. Yeah. Okay. I thought that I was like, oh, is that a different book? Cultish is the book because yeah, you sent me a screenshot of it and you were like, you have to read this. I haven't yet, but I have it on my list. Just, you can listen to it. Yeah. You can also good listen, to listen to it. To it. I listen um, to it. Yeah. I might have to do that. I think I'm going to opt for some lighter uh, it was, things. it wasn't, the way she wrote that book, Amanda Montel was very entertaining because she talks about things like soul cycle and like CrossFit as like, there's cult like things everywhere. We all are susceptible to them. And based on our community and our belief system, we're going to lean into different things and rationalize different things differently. I thought it was entertaining. It didn't feel like okay, too so much Okay, so cultish, Kat's book recommendation. <laughs> I'm just laughing because I was like, I love that the, the quote at the beginning, I loved it because it was funny, but also kind of serious. And then we were going to lean a little bit more lighthearted. And then we never really know where something's going to go. And then I was like, oh, we're talking about hard things. Because I also, in my mind, I'm thinking about a public story. It's public-ish in my, my world and people I know of a family. They're going through something extremely difficult that has become public. And I can't even imagine what the wife is processing. Yeah. I can't. So I try to have so much compassion for what they're going through, even though I know that if I were to just be reading it and not know the people, I'd be like, oh yeah, shop his nuts off or something (laughs) like that. You know, like completely inappropriate. No, it's never that simple. It's never that simple, but it's like when you know the people, it hits different. And I'm not saying I know them well, but when you know someone, then there's that different level of compassion that comes in. That's like, oh my gosh, like these are good people. I thought, but this is not good. This is evil. And what in the world? It's just one of those things. Never plan on going there. Similar to like, we don't really talk about politics at all, which makes me think of a conversation I was having for the Bobby Bone show. I was talking with a friend about how we don't really get political because she was like, oh my gosh, what is work going to be like in 2024? Because the election. All right, you got to love a place that makes shopping for gifts super easy because heads up, Father's Day is June 16th and Macy's has got you covered. Their ultimate gift guide makes shopping for the dad or the dad figure in your life super easy. You can shop by price, 25 and under, 50 and under, 100 and lux. You can shop by category like cologne, watches, leather goods. You can even shop by gift lists. Like if your dad loves to grill, then shop for grill master things. If your dad loves to golf, then you can go to the gift list that is for the golfer. I mean, really, Macy's has thought of it all. If you have a tech-savvy dad, voila, Macy's Gift Finder, again, has you covered with that. Top gifts include Beats headphones, JBL portable speakers, Nintendo Switch, and more. Top brands such as Calvin Klein, Tommy Hilfiger, Polo Ralph Lauren, Columbia, and more. Really, Macy's has it all, so don't be a last-minute shopper. Father's Day is June 16th. Make sure to check out Macy's.com slash gift finder to find a unique gift they'll love. Host Nora McInerney is back for season two of the Head Start Embracing the Journey, a podcast from Ruby Studio and Abvi. In each episode, Nora has real conversations with real people living with chronic migraine to see how they take action to understand the disease, recognizing how a migraine attack can change the course of your day. She unpacks each guest journey and how they talk to their doctors to find out the treatment plans that are right for them. Along with headache specialist Dr. Christopher Ryan and other special guests, Nora speaks to these incredible people who have channeled their feelings of isolation and their chronic migraine journey into advocacy and art. Plus, there are also eight episodes of their first season available for you that are worth binging. So jump into the conversation for season two a show that creates a little more space for empathy and understanding in such a complicated world. There shouldn't be so much hesitation around asking questions and asking for help. So don't wait. Join the Head Start Embracing the Journey as they learn a little more about life with chronic migraine. From searching online to asking your friends and family, there are a lot of ways to look for jobs. But have you considered finding your next job through a staffing company? Your local Express Employment Professionals team is your one connection to endless job opportunities. With just one application, 
they can help you find a job at a company that fits your needs. Visit ExpressPros.com. And as always, Express never charges job seekers a fee. Express knows when companies are hiring, offers benefits and competitive pay. And in just one interview, they are prepared to present you to multiple companies who fit your needs. Express Employment Professionals places people in all kinds of jobs, including everything from customer service to warehouse jobs to accounting and IT roles. Let Express help you. And remember, there is never a fee for job seekers. Go to expresspros.com to get started and discover for yourself what it's like to have support in your job search. You can also start through the Express Jobs app. Download it today to search jobs, apply, and contact your local Express office. I was talking with a friend about how we don't really get political because she was like, oh my gosh, what is work going to be like in 2024 because the election? I said, well, lucky for us, we don't go there because we are the respite from that. Mm -hmm. People can get politics everywhere else else they go and it can be a lot, but they know they can tune into us and that's not what they're going to get. They're going to get the opposite. But you don't want to be dismissive of what's happening in the world. So she's like, well, maybe y'all could address it. And you talk about who you wish was on the ballot. Like if you had your own little celebrity version, like you would want it to be like The Rock versus Dolly or something. Like <laughs> who would you vote for? Yeah. Like that's your 2024 ballot. So making it a little more fun. Or Lunchbox even threw out something the other day and we were having a conversation. And he was like, I don't know. Can we talk about which one dies first? <laughs> Because, like, nobody's yeah. pumped. Nobody that I know really is pumped. pumped about either option. So it's like, how do you just talk about it without really talking about it and making it a thing? Yeah. And so if politics get high in your home in the coming months, try to make it fun. Be like, <laughs> talk about who's going to die first. <laughs> I don't want to talk about it, but, like, let's see. Who enters hospice first or something? I don't know. They're just both incredibly old they're and elderly. I yeah. like elderly people, but not running our country. <laughs> not for your president. <laughs> and like, and like, I like rational people, kind of in somewhat sane ish. And I just don't know that we're there right now. People, with people aren't suffering from like early onset. Or I guess that wouldn't be early onset dementia. That would just be like dementia, right? Because the they're age not early. They're, yeah, I, I'm not sure. But I thought I would throw out like a fun idea in case you're in a. <laughs> Uh, an intense political conversation around the kitchen table, you don't want to be a part of it. Just be like, how about this? Who is a celebrity or singer or like a fun person that you want on the, who would you vote for? Create some drafts and then make it fun. I just uh, can't imagine having intense political conversations around the season. Like I know it's just going to get worse. It's going to be, it's going to inundate us and I'm going to try to figure out how the heck I can avoid it. Because it's going to be everywhere. Well, yeah. How do you avoid it? But also like if you want information, then like how do you find it without overloading yourself too? Or like when the election happens, like whoever wins, like I don't even want to deal with the people that respond in the unhealthy ways. Peaceful protesting all day long, but things just don't always stay peaceful. And then people get hurt and let's move on. I have uh, (laughs) four signs that you're a closed-minded person. So we went over the four signs you're open-minded. You don't like to consider new perspectives and you don't like to change your opinions. You don't like to learn from your mistakes. You lack curiosity. You don't question if you could be wrong about something like within yourself. Like, hmm, maybe I am wrong about this. I feel like younger me was a little bit of that at times. And I feel like as I age, I'm way more curious. I do like to consider new perspectives. I have been able to change my opinions. I most definitely want to learn from my mistakes. And I, I question myself all the time. I was going to say, maybe that can go too far. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like all the time. Well, I think also something that I've learned that probably was difficult to learn, and I don't know that I would always have admitted this, but the more I think I have learned, whether it's about myself or the world, it brings more of an awareness of how much we actually don't know. And also the capacity that we don't have the ability to know it. Like, I don't know that I can, that any of us can have the ability to know certain things. And I don't know if that comes from age or experience, but I think that sometimes gets maybe in the way, not that I'm closed-minded, but I can be at a, at a fault open to being wrong because I think I've sat with that idea that like, this is what I think, but also I thought this 10 years ago and that changed. Does that make sense? Yes, you do make sense. And it makes me think of uh, the quote which, have you seen Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventures? I don't, I've never heard okay, of that. Okay, they did a remake kind of recently. 
but this is from the original one, 1989, the OG one. That was the year I was born. You should definitely watch it with Patrick. But you learn about all these people in history, and Socrates is one of them. And there's a Socrates quote, which is only true wisdom is in knowing that you know nothing. Oh. And there's been a lot of quotes very similar to that that people have said over time that actually are very wise and you would look up to. And they're philosophers, they're deep thinkers. And you're like, gosh, they know so much. But they'll be the first to say, I know nothing. Like the minute you have a problem is when you think you know Know everything. everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so in (laughs) Bill and Dead's Excellent Adventure, though, they, they call him like Socrats. Is it like a comedy? Yes, it's a funny okay. movie, but they are working on a history project. And it's like they take you through all these different things. And so when you're watching this comedy, you're actually learning, learning about history at the same time. But Socrates, the way it is spelled, it looks like Socrates. Yeah. So they're like, Socrates. They're like, what's up, dude? Like, like California? Like yeah, I'm trying to think of their personalities. Okay. Like they're Surfer right dudes? on. Yeah. Oh, yeah, and they're like, let's go learn about Socrates. <laughs> you know? Okay. That kind of yeah. thing. It's funny. Yeah. So you got a book recommendation from this episode, Cultish, and you got a movie recommendation from this episode. And then you also should just try to be open-minded because when you're open-minded, you don't have to be right all the time. You Which just, is a relief. That's you, what it is. It's, yeah. You just want to be understood yeah. and you want everyone to feel understood. And then you have more space for understandness. <laughs> Under- <laughs> understoodness. <laughs> Under- <laughs> All the understandings everywhere. Uh, just love everybody. We, yeah, but also have passion and care, but then don't care to where you end up doubling down so hard where you're like, wait a second, what I'm saying. Well, you care. Where did I hear this? I heard something. Oh, it's going to bother me where it came from. Where somebody said, honestly, I think it was Lisa Vanderpump that said this, <laughs> but she said, would you rather be right or would you rather be happy? That has been sitting with me the last week of would you rather be right or would you rather be happy? And sometimes we can change that. Would you rather be right or would you rather be understood? Would you rather be right or would you rather have peace? I think being right gets in the way of so many things that actually don't matter as much. Yeah, I think, I mean, I just Googled it. I feel like it's a common thing that so- a lot did of Did Socrates people- say that too? <laughs> Socrates, <laughs> dude, would you rather be right or would you rather be happy? <laughs> I don't know. They, it's a cute movie. You need to watch it and maybe even watch the remake. I wish that that's how school was taught. As a comedy? Yeah. <laughs> As a comedy movie or a play or like all the teachers would get together and be like, all right, today we're learning about this. And they would all act out in these characters and teach it in like a fun way. That would have been very helpful for my brain. Yeah. Well, you should have the option of what track you want to go into. Like, do you want to go into like learn through comedy track or learn through textbook track? Maybe that's or, the future. Yeah. Maybe. They are. I mean, it already has evolved in a way that they don't teach everybody the same anymore like they used to. Yeah. And in some places, there is still like a blanket way of learning, but there are definitely more avenues for like, hey, if you happen to learn this way, you can have more time to do this. Or if you need this read to you audibly, this might be better because of the way your brain processes. Yeah. And they have those options. And that's great for my kids. I wish I had had that option because I know now with stuff that I've learned about my brain having stuff audibly done would have been so Mm -hmm. beneficial for me, especially audibly with actors on a screen doing fun things telling about the history. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) So Kat, where can people find you? On Instagram at You Need Therapy Podcast and at Kat.Defada. And I'm at Radio Amy and have the day you need to have. (laughs) Bye. Bye. All right, this sun season, evolve your sun care with new Banana Boat 360 coverage. With Advanced Control Mist, it's a new way to spray. It's an all-new bottle for an all-new mist experience that smells great and is incredibly light on your skin. You can even customize your spray. Like, to cover targeted areas, you just tap the trigger lightly, or you can pull the trigger fully for a long, continuous spray, ensuring long-lasting Banana Boat protection. Plus, it's refillable. From sweat-resistant sport formula to kids SPF 50 plus, this is sun care that'll come in handy when my kids are swimming, playing sports, when I'm hiking, when we're out at the lake, or whatever it is that we're doing outdoors. Shop Banana Boat 360 Mist at Walmart, Target, or Amazon. In every pair of Tacoba's boots, you can expect handmade quality, first wear comfort, and timeless Western style. 
Tacova's boots are always made from premium bovine and exotic leathers, and with occasional resoling, they're going to last a lifetime. The best way to shop for boots is at your local Tacova store, where you're going to be greeted by the smell of fresh leather and a friendly smile. So come on in, grab a cold one, get fitted by a pro, and shop the latest styles. Visit tacovas.com. That's T E C O V A S.com. And don't go gently, y'all. All right, this show is sponsored by BetterHelp. It's a simple truth that no matter who you are, mental health challenges can affect you, and how you manage them can really make all the difference. That's why everyone should have access to mental health support that meets them where they are and helps them get through things. Now, BetterHelp provides online therapy on your schedule. It's flexible, simple to use, and more affordable than in-person therapy. Connect with a licensed therapist selected just for you. Learn more at BetterHelp.com. That's BetterHelp.com. BetterHelp.com.